Go. All right, Tom Moran for Tom's Big Spiders here. We're about to do a rehouse of my, what I'm hoping is a female piece of Letharia rufalata. I got two of these guys about a year and a half ago, and they've outgrown the current enclosures. Both of them just had a good molt, and they're quite big now. So we'll be doing that. Hope it goes okay. And also, I've had several people lately pick up piece of Letharia species and ask me how I safely transfer them. So I'm going to show one method I use, and hopefully things go well. So I'll stop talking for the time being. We'll get on to the fun stuff. Okay, we're about to rehouse one of my subadult piece of Letharia rufaladas. I have to say, I'm going to put a picture in here and insert in a moment because I got a nice picture from the other night. And for a while, I've had folks tell me that their favorite pokies are rufaladas, and I hadn't jumped on that bandwagon yet. But now that this one's molted and I've seen the adult colorations, they're absolutely amazing. Like the greens and yellows and just uh, Billy and I were looking at it the other night, just floored with how beautiful they are. This is a larger species, but I've read mixed, mixed comments about how flighty they can be. Mine seem to be pretty calm lately. So we're gonna try to get this one out into this enclosure here and hopefully everything goes well. So I fed her last night and she was eating earlier this morning, which probably would have been a good time to try to do this. I got these guys in April of 2016 and they're about an inch long each. And I rehoused them into these actually a, exactly a year ago today. And now we're gonna be rehousing them again. So they'll be going into one of the extra large critter keepers. I'll talk a little bit more about these in a minute. Let's see if I can find my brush. Here. Thank you. So we're gonna go ahead and try to tease this one up. About as gentle as you can possibly get. So hopefully I can get this one on camera. We'll get a shot of her afterwards. She seems to be, now that they put on some size, they were a little bit flighty when they were smaller. You tell me, can you kind of see it there? It's just a little blurry. That's all right, all. we'll get her out of this in a minute. And what I'm probably going to do is just cut it. My phone's been acting up a bit. And uh, my other camera, I still haven't got the light. I've ordered some lights for it, so I can't get great pictures with it. So I like using my phone for the time being. So what we're going to do is cut it in a moment, and then when we come back, we'll get it into the new enclosure. Hopefully, it'll go nice and smooth. But uh, just some background for these guys. I keep them moist as slings, and then as they put on some size, I don't worry about it as much. These guys are in desperate need of rehousing. I was actually going to rehouse them before this, but both of them were in pre-malt. So if you look down, this was the old housing, the European-style arboreal or fossorial enclosures which is just, they crap everywhere, there's poop everywhere. But this one was doing a lot of, both of them actually spent most of the time in a burrow behind here. So what we have in the new one over here, crystal clear, ooh, little, oh no, it's not a crack. Critter Keeper Extra Large, which I believe is about six to seven gallons or so. And I may have to do another rehouse because these guys get rather large, eight to nine inches. But what will probably happen is it's going to take refuge behind here. It'll hide. I've got sphagnum moss in here. And what they'll do is construct the old dirt curtains, which when they throw web up and throw dirt and sphagnum moss into them to kind of give themselves some privacy. I have one of these Petco plants, which unfortunately they do not make anymore or do not sell because it stinks because I love them for the arboreal enclosures. Water dish, so not... Nothing super fancy. I want the, the spider to be comfortable, especially with winter coming. I want to make sure that I can control and make sure it doesn't get too dry in here. But we're going to go ahead and cut here, and the next one we'll be putting it into the enclosure. So. Wait till the dog gets out of here in the other room. All right, so we've gone ahead and removed that cardboard ring. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> I was hoping Billy was going to pull the camera away. Um, this is just something here that I have. I use, I've been using them for a while. You don't have to do it this way, but for the ones that could bolt, this kind of gives you a little seal to make sure that they can't get out. I just use one piece of tape to affix it to this because what I want to be able to do afterwards is slide this right off so I can get it into the enclosure. If I have that big ring on it, it makes it a little more difficult. And I've had a lot of folks contacting me lately who have just gotten their first uh, pokies 
and they're terrified of rehousing them, that's a nice technique to use to keep you safe, the spider safe, the spider from bolting and getting out of there. So we're gonna go ahead and drop her in here. Then I'm gonna go grab my other brush from my room because I forgot to get it out. My new brush because my dog's chewed up the one I've been using for years. Not happy about that. Go ahead and try to move her down. Come on, girl. Just in case. Right. Take that. What I do is give her one funnel poke so we can get the rest of that. My God, she's gorgeous. go. This is going to be your money shot. Oh my lord. So if, you want to, if you want to grab the cover, I'll take this from you. So we're just going to switch here for a minute. So if anybody's going to get in trouble with the spider, it's going to be me. And holy jeez. Why is this trembling so much? There she is. This is extra jittery today. This is all messed up. Try to hold this still as can be. There she is, Pisolotheria rufalata. Looking gorgeous. I'll try to zoom in. Amazing spider. And these guys are ridiculously calm. I had read uh, mixed reports more recently. I've heard that they're one of the more calm species. She's like very, very calm, which is a change for when she was just a sling or a juvenile because they were rather skittish then. So there we go. We're going to give her a break and stop it here for a minute and I'll come back for a uh, outro. I uh, just, my phone's been jittering as heck. I'm having very difficult camera time lately. Try a different pose. All right, so obviously that went pretty well, thank gosh. That was actually one of the best behaved spiders I've had in a rehousing in quite some time. And again, shows you that uh, the Pisolotheria, some of their reputation I don't think is particularly well deserved. They're not speed freaks that are out to bite you. Most of them can be very calm. The problem is when they do get upset, they can bolt. So a few husbandry notes before we move on, and Billy will leave me a little spot on the side here to put my things in. As slings, I keep these guys in 32-ounce deli containers. Even if they're really teeny tiny, they're going to grow quickly. This is a fast-growing species that's going to put on size. This one, These guys got to be about four and a half inches or so in a year, maybe even more. Um, I start with moist substrate, cork bark leaning in a corner, some sphagnum moss, and a water dish. As they start to put on size, I don't worry as much about keeping the substrate moist. I will pour some water down the side, give them a choice, a place to drink on the side, and allow it to pull into the bottom and kind of soak into the bottom, but I let it dry up in between. I do keep the water dishes full. Be prepared, even though this is an arboreal species, for a lot of burrowing. My guys will sp spend a lot of time under the ground. They'd actually go under the cork bark, build some dirt curtains, but some one of them was actually burrowed under the soil, almost like a fossorial species. So don't be alarmed if they burrow. Once it's time to rehouse them, you can usually get away with three rehousing or two rehousings with these guys. The second one, I usually get them into something about yay big, maybe about a gallon size, a little bit more. Give them some space because, again, they're going to grow fast. This is a spider that can potentially be problematic when you're rehousing. So you want to make sure you limit the amount of times you rehouse. So my other guys were in those gallon containers once they get to adult size, you're looking at something anywhere from 5 to 10 gallons or so. This is one of the larger Pisolotheria species, so something in the realm of 10 gallons is not overkill. My guys right now will be in one that's about 7 gallons, I believe is what that critter keeper is, and we'll play it by ear. If they get to be 9 inches like they supposedly can get, then it might be time to move them into something else. Um, they're eating machines. I feed them once a week. They'll eat full-grown dubia, no problem. Uh, they take down crickets like beasts, 
And temperature wise, they're all kept in the 70s most of the year with the temperatures hitting sometimes 80 degrees or so in the summer. So no specific requirements there. And I don't fuss with the humidity. So there we go. That went really, really well. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I think it helped. It really helps people when they see thumbs up to go, all right, this is quality stuff because it can be tough finding quality stuff on tarantulas on the internet. If this is the first time watching and you enjoyed it, please feel free to check out a couple more videos. I'm going to go ahead and post probably here and here some other videos, including my original rehouse of these guys. And if you like it enough, please subscribe. I love getting subscribers. I think everybody does. It just kind of validates what you do. So thanks so much for watching. As I stand here awkwardly, wait for this to end.